When the movie The Fast and the Furious came out in the early 2000s, one of the movie's star cars was the orange Mark IV Toyota Supra that Brian O'Connor drove in the movie. And when that car came out, all the fanboys in the Philippines were like, oh, I want to have that car. But tough luck, everybody. Why? Because you know, the Philippines didn't bring the Mark IV Supra into our shores. But now, fast forward to 2019, and you can own your very own locally sourced Toyota Supra because Toyota you know, Philippines brought in the Mark V Toyota Supra. And that's what I have here behind me. And today, we're going to review it. Let's go. Before I begin, I'd like to give a special shout out and thank you to Toyota Pasong Tamo for letting me do this walk around review of this fantastic car beside me, the Toyota Supra in jet black metallic. If you have anything that you need from Toyota and you're close by, head on to Toyota Pasong Tamo right now and pay them a visit. So let's begin with the review. All right, so first things first, let's get this thing out of the way. You see everybody, including your mother and her mother, knows that the Toyota Supra, the Mark V Supra, was co-developed by Toyota with BMW. I mean, everybody already knows that. So I'm not going to uh, touch on that too much, but let's just put it this way. Both manufacturers came together, decided to come up with a new sports car. Toyota went the direction of the Supra, which is a sports coupe, while BMW went the direction of the Z4, which is a sport convertible. There's that. The thing is, if you consider it, a lot of people are saying Supra is not a real Toyota, not, not even a real Supra because it is actually a BMW. Uh, I would beg to differ there guys and you know I wouldn't even think that it's a bad thing I'd even think that it's a great thing because if you're gonna partner for some with somebody to create your sports car BMW is as good as it gets everybody and BMW has a great pedigree I mean it's not really a bad thing all right so the Toyota Supra was co-developed with BMW and so was the Toyota 86 which was co-developed with the Subaru and so many other collaborations in the car industry. This is pretty normal for the industry, okay? The Toyota 86, since I mentioned that, you know, it was developed with Subaru but turned out to be a great car for what it is which is a track-ready, tunable sports car that you can just toss around in the curves. For the Toyota Supra, we're going to see where it slots in the performance car arena and see what kind of uh, performance the potential owner would expect from something like the new Toyota Supra. Looking at the body of the car, you could already see that the Mark V Supra is the child of the Mark IV Supra and the FT1 concept of Toyota, concept car. You see, when the two got together, they had a kid and the kid came out to be the Mark V Supra. Supra. Now, the good thing about this is this Supra is the stiffest chassis car that Toyota has ever built to date. It's even stiffer than the LFA and it has a very short wheelbase. So unlike the Mark IV Supra, which is really pegged more like a Grand Tourer than a, than a sports car or a track car, this Mark V Supra uh, with a short wheelbase and a stiff chassis would make for a very nimble sports car. Looking at the nose of the new Supra, you would see that it sports an array of six LED headlights which gives it a very futuristic look and it has the turn signals here in a little LED line that you have there and it is it adds to that futuristic look and all. Now since the Philippine spec Supra is the Gazoo rating specifications, it already comes with a body kit that includes this uh, front uh, lip spoiler that you have here and it continues all the way to the side it has a body kit as well at the side and of course that aggressive rear diffuser now everyone is saying about the fake vents that the Toyota Supra the new Supra has and if you'll notice yes the, the top half is uh, it's actually a fake vent, but the, the rest of the vents up front are all functional. You'd see it's a functional area. And uh, as what the Toyota engineers have said, this is, uh, you know, covered out. It's a fake area. It's 
because for normal street driving you don't really need that much cooling but in the event that you would want to take your car to the track and would need that added cooling already then this could easily be swapped out for a more functional piece and speaking of fake vents well the toyota supra has its share of fake vents we have a couple here in the hood and you have here to the door panel right here okay and you got another set of fake vents here to the side of the well the rear hunches now a lot of people are saying that these fake vents detract on the Toyota Supra, but if you will look at it, these are pieces that have been used to cover up actual holes, and you could just take them out and use it for more cooling when you are doing track duties in your Toyota Supra. While well, we're still at the subject of the exterior styling of the Supra, I'd like to divert your attention to this. Look at this. This is the rear quarter hunch of the Toyota Supra and I must say that this is one sexy beast. Look at that. <laughs> there are some reports that Toyota even had to come up with a special body stamping machine just to be able to come out with this fantastic curve on the rear hunch which is giving the Toyota Supra that ultra sexy look. Moving on to the rear of the car, I must admit that for me, this is the most beautiful part of the Supra. I mean, yeah, sure. I love busy rears in cars and you could see that this has been sculpted really, really nice. You'd see that there's a 3D uh, effect on the taillights. It's jutting out of the body itself and you've got this integrated ducktail spoiler uh, that wow it's just it just flows seamlessly into the car and well you got here of course the toyota supra badge which is taken out from the original font of the mark IV supra and of course you have the gr badge that tells you that this is a gazoo racing variant that we have here in the philippines now moving down to the bottom part you will see that it sports an aggressive uh, rear diffuser design and it's finished off by twin tailpipes which I must say for a stock tailpipe these are quite aggressive they look like they're three inches to me and they also sound very very nice I mean take a listen those crackles and burbles that came out of the car I mean wow I really really like that and that adds a little bit more of an aggressive note on the exhaust mind you that's not even on sport mode so yes if you want your Supra to cruise uh, quietly as a daily driver it can do that but if you rev the engine then you can hear those crackles and burbles and that makes it a very fun to drive sports car. Now a fun fact here is you could see that at the center of that aggressive rear diffuser we got here these array of LED lights. Now this is inspired by Formula Racing cars. Now, F1 cars have this as their brake light. It really blinks really fast to help uh, alert the drivers at the back. But for the Toyota Supra's case, this acts instead as the backup reverse light for the car. So that is another fun fact, a quirk of the Toyota Supra. Over here we have a backup camera. Uh, you know it, it has a very aggressive slanting rear windshield so this should help you know the drivers and the owners to back up their really nice Supra into the parking lot because of that backup camera. Okay so this is the Supra's uh, key fob as you can see it has a Toyota emblem but the shape of the key fob is very BMW even the the way the buttons are laid out. This is very modern BMW. And as I've always said, it, there's really nothing wrong with that. It's a regular key fob. 
Next up, looking at the wheels, we have here these beautiful 19-inch wheels of the Toyota Supra. And I must say that the design for me is really, really nice. I mean, the Toyota has kept up with the times and has made these stock wheels into a more concave rather than a flat face. And that gives it a more sporty appearance. Although I'm not really that much of a fan of the two-tone silver and black finish of the wheel itself. But well, it's a minor quibble. Now these 19 inches are wrapped by with Michelin Pilot Super Sport tires. So you know of the sporting aspirations of the Supra. These tires will not fail you on the track. Now the fronts are wrapped by with a 255 35 uh, 19 inch rubber. And at the back we have their uh, 275 35 for a staggered setup. That is just perfect for a rear wheel drive sports car. Moving on to the engine, the Toyota Supra is motivated by a 3-liter inline 6 engine that is sourced from BMW. Now, this is one of the similarities with BMW, particularly with the BMW Z4 that everyone has been talking about. But let's focus right here on this engine of Toyota right here. It's its uh, published figures is 335 horsepower and 500 newton meters of torque. But that's what Toyota says. You see, when they got the engine from BMW, Toyota just wanted to make sure that it would still carry that vaunted Toyota reliability of an engine. So what the Toyota engineers did is they tweaked the engine, they tuned it to Toyota specifications, and voila, you now have a Toyota engine that is really great when it comes to reliability. But here's the clincher. You see, there's a lot of YouTube videos that came out already and it shows a drag race, a track race between the Z4 and the new Toyota Supra. And consistently, the Toyota Supra always beats out the Z4. Now, how could that be if this engine only has 335 horsepower when the Z4 has 380 horsepower? So could it be that aside from just making sure that this engine is more reliable, that Toyota added some secret sauce to this engine to make it go faster as well? Huh. Sneaky, sneaky on new Toyota, but well, that is what you're getting with the Mark V Supra. Yes, the base engine may be an inline six source from BMW, but with Toyota's tuning, tweaking, and reliability uh, performance changes, this engine actually performs far better than its cousin, the BMW Z4. Another interesting fact about this engine bay, I'm not talking about the engine anymore, but instead I'm talking about the engine bay of the new Toyota Supra, is that it has something for everybody. You see, if you just want a regular daily driver sports car, then this engine is perfectly fine. But if you are going to take your Supra into the track, notice to the sides of the engine bay, you got a couple of areas where there are empty screw sockets that you can find. And there's one here, okay, and there's another one here. Now, why did Toyota, you know, uh, one of the best manufacturers in the world, why would they leave out something like this? And apparently, the Toyota engineers have an explanation for that. You see, if you want to take your Toyota Supra to the track, and you want to add additional stiffness to your chassis, you can mount, you know, you can go to the aftermarket and you can mount stiffening bars here to stiffen up your nose for more sharper performance on the track. So yes, the engineers at Toyota made sure that the Supra can be tunable for performance racing, for track racing, or whatever you want to do with it. Moving on to the rear, as you would expect in a sports car, there should not be much trunk space. But surprisingly for the new Toyota Supra, you've got a hefty amount of trunk space. It's not equal to you know, your regular CUV or your regular sedan. But this is surprisingly roomy, if you notice. You, you could probably fit a smallish golf bag here take you to the course and then you you will see over there you have your uh, speakers you have a couple of speakers there right behind the driver and passenger seats 
And yeah, so the Supra could do its duties and fair share of grocery runs because you could fit quite a good amount of stuff right here. Something you wouldn't expect in a two-seater sports car. All right, getting inside the Toyota Supra for the first time. Ooh, oh my God. Okay, yeah. So everybody who's done a review of this car already is correct. This little baby right here, the roof line, yeah, if you're not careful, you're gonna hit your head. I, I grazed my head a little bit in here. So you have to duck in going inside the car. So, and I'm just 5'6". So imagine people who are taller than me, they'll really have to duck their head in in order to not to hit their head on this. But looking at it from here, hmm, the seats are very, very supportive. You know, they are, see another, another hallmark of Japanese cars, especially sports cars, is they really build cars made for Japanese bodies and Asian bodies. You know, this, the seats are perfect for somebody like me. You know, the, the bolsters on the side of the seat are supportive, but they're not really that uh, tight. It's not tight for somebody like me. Uh, the sides are also very well supported as well. And if you look around the interior, you will see that you are inside a BMW interior, which everybody already said, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. Because I personally, I like BMW interiors, especially modern BMW interiors. And this is no different from it. You still have the usual uh, BMW gear shift here which is found in all of its automatic vehicles and you have your paddle shifters right here and this is good for an 8-speed automatic transmission unfortunately since all over the world there's no manual transmission option for the Supra then there's also no manual transmission offering in the Philippines and it's not also a bad thing because Honestly guys, we've already spoken with our money since majority of cars that we buy nowadays, especially in the Philippines, are automatic because of the horrendous traffic we have here. And you know the Supra being uh, an automatic only car, this is a sports car that you could take with you to the office on a daily basis. Alright, we are now inside the Toyota Supra and we are going to start her up. Okay, the start button is right here. Okay, you got a nice looking instrument panel right here. You have the tachometer front and center with a 6,500 RPM red line. You got your speedometer right there at the side. And you got a screen here uh, to the right that shows you your alarms and uh, warnings. So right now I got my door open and my trunk open as well. You got your typical fuel gauge here and you have your temperature right there. So pretty, pretty standard uh, format for your instrument panel. And on the steering wheel, you have a big Toyota logo right here. And you got your cruise control, your Bluetooth settings here for volume and taking calls and all that. And you got your typical BMW layout here for the climate control for your uh, infotainment system and you got the well this LCD right here over here you got an electronic parking brake boo I would have loved the you know an e-brake that is mechanical because this is still a rear-wheel drive sports car and although it's automatic you know if you are a good driver you could still get an automatic to drift and you have your master control knob here wrapped in carbon fiber trim and you have this huge sport button it's there because the Supra wants you to push that button every single time you get into the car and you got traction control off if you want to have some fun with the car and uh, the usual BMW gear shifter here 
if you are uh, uh, familiar with uh, BMW interiors, this is what the gear shifter looks like. Okay, seated on the driver's seat, you will see at my back that you have a direct access well, to the trunk and you could see the speaker is there peeking out. I don't know if it could be shown here in the video, but you got a decent amount of storage space that can be found here. You got your cup holders here in the middle. You got a little cubby here. And if you will look at the doors, you got uh, map holders. Wow, you got actual map holders. And look at that. You also have a glove box, an actual glove box that you can see here in the Toyota Supra. So for a two-seater sports car, this vehicle does not lack in storage space. Right here up front, you got a USB port right there. Uh, that's presumably to charge your gadgets and I'm not sure if the Philippine spec has Android Auto or Apple CarPlay But if it does that's where you will plug your phone and you'll park your smartphone in this tray right here So yeah, decent amount of storage space inside the cabin and you also got your tunnel cover right there Where you can also put quite a bit of stuff over here at the driver footwell of the Supra you got this lever here where you can uh, open the engine bonnet and as you can see there it says two times because you have to uh, open it twice because the Supra also features dual uh, bonnet locks just like in the Z4 now to open the trunk you go here to the side and you will see here there's a button that opens the trunk now, your driver's seat is all power, as you can see. It's got all power with uh, two settings that you can use. And the driver's seat material you will see here is made out of nice leather. These are racing buckets. And the interior trim of the seat is made out of Alcantara. And there is a red and white stitching all around the seats. Uh, the seats look beautiful. You got these aluminum accents here, but they don't have holes in them. So no, they cannot fit uh, four-point harnesses for racing. Probably have to change seats for that if you want to get that. Instead, you still get the usual three-point seat belt right here. The passenger seat also gets uh, all power seats. So you would know that you are in a premium sports car and Towards the side there, you got this uh, mesh net, which is which adds more to the storage of the Supra. So yes, you know the Toyota engineers, BMW engineers have thoroughly thought about adding ample storage inside your Supra to store all of your stuff. So there you have it, guys. That is the Philippine spec Mark V Toyota Supra that has come to the shores of the Philippines. Now we're going to wonder what is this Toyota Supra trying to be and who is the type of driver that it's trying to please? Well, the way I'm seeing it is the Toyota Supra is trying to be a jack of all trades and that makes it pretty much a master of none. Why? Well, if you're a buyer who is looking at the Toyota Supra as a daily driver sports car that you could take with you wherever you want to go, yes, the Supra can do that. It is an eight-speed automatic transmission. It has all the power and grunt you need for all those grocery runs. And it has one of the most comfortable interiors in a sports car of this price point that you can find. Now, if you're the type of person who wants to buy a Supra and gut it out, take it to the track and really, you know, just uh, <laughs> race with it. Well, the Supra can also do that with a lot of modifications. You can remove all those non-functional vents. You can add chassis stiffeners as well. And we all know that the BMW i6 engine is a pretty tunable engine and it also comes with an open ECU so it is pretty easy to tune it's something that you can do as well now if you're the type of buyer who would want to get the Supra for
for its canyon carving abilities and its abilities to have fun on the road and have, have fun in the back mountain road and yes the Supra can do that for you as well because of the short wheelbase the aggressive tires and a lot of power on tap 335 horsepower as published as published but anyway if you are a Toyota Supra prospective buyer, you're gonna wonder how much this car would cost you. Well, this Gazoo Racing Supra right here is on sale for 5,050,000 pesos. And if you would like to go for the color red one, it goes a little bit lower at 4,990,000 pesos. That's a pretty good amount of dough for a sports car, but as, as it goes, the Supra is an iconic name and I believe the Mark V Supra has lived up to that iconic name. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy my videos. If you do, please subscribe to my channel, hit that like button, and if you have a lot of Supra comments and discussions, you could hit me in the comments below. I'll see you again in the next video. Bye-bye.